Hi again everyone, Michael Volchinovich here from Vibrant Shot. Today we're going to be looking at blending multiple exposures in Photoshop. So we're not going to be looking at uh, multiple exposure blending in an HDR uh, sense where we actually use an HDR process for, for merging the uh, you know two or three images that we may have. We're actually going to do it manually through layer masks and we're going to look at some of the techniques that are available to us uh, to help us do that. So essentially what I've started with here is um, two images. This one is uh, minus one EV and this one is plus one EV. And uh, none of them really look quite right on their own. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and uh, fuse them together to get something that uh, well looks a little bit better. Now I will be uh, doing a full treatment on this particular image where we uh, essentially edit it from start to finish um, in a later tutorial. But for the time being I think uh, it's a good starting point to look at how we're actually going to take these two exposures and blend them together so that you are aware of the different options that are available uh, when you're editing your own images in the future. So we're going to take this image uh, we're we'll start off by selecting the move tool and we're going to move uh, into the other tab here and we're going to drop it uh, right into uh, this image here. So now we've got our two layers. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to select both of them and we're just going to align the top edge and align the left edge. Now assuming of course that we were shooting on a tripod and there was no movement whatsoever then essentially this would create a uh, perfect alignment for us. Now in the case of this particular image if we uh, zoom in a little bit and we start toggling on and off we see that there is a bit of a misalignment between them. So the next thing we have to do is actually uh, align these layers before we can actually start blending them. So now what I want to do is I'm going to select a different blend, a difference blend mode, and that basically just kind of allows us to see the two layers together. Now, if um, the two images had a lot of contrast to them, this blend mode works really nicely for aligning images. Now, in the case of these images here, they're actually fairly low contrast because of all the fog and sort of um, you know smoky nature that's that was going on um, with the light and um, and the general conditions. So with a lack of contrast it becomes a little bit more difficult to align them but uh, this still serves as a good starting point. So we're going to go ahead and use our up and down arrows, left and right arrows, and we're just going to start kind of massaging this so that we get to a point where things look like they're aligning pretty well. And essentially what you want to do is you want to remove um, the black edges. So we see here we have a lot of really, really dark edges. Because we're on a difference blend mode, that's kind of telling us that we're not quite right. So if we start adjusting this, um, we want to get to a point where we have a minimum amount of those edges. And this looks like we're at a pretty good point here. So let's start with that. And um, so what I'm basically going to do is uh, go back to our normal blend mode, and we're going to drop the opacity down to, let's say, um, you know, 50% or so. And now we're going to just zoom in, and we're going to try to align this a little bit more carefully. So this area has a good number of a good amount of contrast. So we're going to use that as our reference point. And again, we're just going to kind of bump these layers up and down um, until we get to a point where everything looks quite closely aligned. And for me, it looks like that point is right in around here. Yep, that looks pretty good. OK, so now if you were, um, uh, you know, in this case, we're, we're lucky that the images aren't rotated. Um, between themselves. It's really just kind of a, a vertical and horizontal alignment that we have to do. If it were the case that they were rotated, then the next thing to try is to essentially um, select both of these layers and use the uh, Edit Auto Align Layers option. And essentially from here we can um, pick, um, let's start with the Auto option for example, click OK and that will attempt to align these layers together. Now as you can see with this particular image, that failed miserably. The image looks horrible. Uh, so in this case, not really terribly useful. And again, I think the main reason for that is because the image is fairly low contrast and because there's so much going on. Um, if the features were really uh, prominent and there was a lot of contrast um, within the image, uh, typically the auto align layers does a much better job than this. So we're just going to go right back to where we were, which is our sort of manual alignment. And uh, it actually looks pretty good. Uh, obviously, we're going to have to take care of some of these cropping issues that we have along the top here, but we can do that later uh, when we're wrapping things up. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take our opacity up to 100% again, and now we're essentially, um, you know, the, the minus 1 EV layer is covering uh, everything. So what I'm thinking that I'd like to do with this particular image is, um, you know, with this one here, I like some of the highlights that are going on. It creates sort of a feel of mystery. 
but I don't really like how the blacks are completely washed out um, within them. And sure, we could burn that in, um, but of course, it's you know it's a fair bit of work, and uh, and it just creates more noise when we start burning them in. So that's where uh, you know blending these two exposures uh, becomes quite handy. So what we're going to do uh, to get started, we're basically going to cover three different techniques. So we're going to start with this one. Um, it's basically a channels-based selection. So we're going to make sure that our uh, top layer is enabled. We're going to go into channels, and we're going to start cycling through some of these different color channels over here. And in this case, I see that red seems to um, represent some of the shadows and blacks the best. Um, they seem to be most prominent. So we're going to take our red channel, and we're going to just right, sorry about that, we're going to right click that and click duplicate channel. Um, that's just going to create a copy of our red channel for us. I'm just going to delete some of these earlier copies so that they don't confuse you. So back in our copy channel over here, next thing we're going to do is we're going to invert uh, this channel. And basically what we're doing by inverting is we're going to make sure that all of the blacks or the shadows um, are coming through. Uh, and anything that is a highlight essentially is now black. Um, it's not going to be let through. Now, right now, I think there is just a little bit too much black being let through. I mean, essentially, we're going to be replacing everything with that top layer image if we kind of leave things as they are. So we're going to hit uh, Command L or Control L if you're on a PC, and we're going to adjust our levels a little bit here. So we're going to just drag this um, middle slider. We'll actually, start from here a little bit as well and uh, just clip some of those. And now we're at a point, I think, where it's a little bit more reasonable. We've got, you know, just the deepest shadows are going through, and some of the ones that are in the middle are, you know, just partially getting through. So we're going to click OK there. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit uh, Command and click on our uh, thumbnail. That basically makes a selection around everything that is white. We'll go back into our layers, and we're going to create a layer mask on this top layer. So when we create that layer mask, what we've essentially done now is we've let all of the shadows come through, and then, um, sorry, we've retained all of our shadows, and um, and all the highlights are coming through from the bottom layer. So as you can see here, um, we you know when we start with this layer here, these these shadows aren't terribly well defined. If we go back to this one now, we see that we've still got all of those blacks in place. Um, but versus where we started, um, we see that a lot more of the highlights are now peeking through our image. So that's a good starting point right there. And um, essentially, whenever we're happy with a particular blend, um, we can create a stamp visible layer, which we do using uh, Command Option Shift E or Control Alt Shift E if you're on a PC. And uh, now basically we've got um, you know our layer that we can use as a starting point uh, for editing the rest of our image. Now in this case, we're obviously going to cover a couple of different ways of doing this. So we're going to just delete this layer and go right back to where we were. So I'm going to delete this layer mask. And we're going to look at another way, which is essentially the simplest way. And it's usually the way that I tend to start with because um, it takes the less, at least amount of time. And you know, if the result looks good, then why not use it? So what we basically do is we're going to double click on uh, the layer over here. And we're going to use our blend if sliders to see if we can um, blend the two layers using a really straightforward technique. So essentially what we want to do is we want to let those highlights from the base layer come through. So um, Basically, we're going to take this slider and start dragging. Now, as we do that, we see that it does not look very good because the transitions um, are really harsh and essentially our image just starts to look like rubbish. So to um, counteract that, what we're going to do is we're going to hold Option or Alt on a PC and we're going to just split this slider. See, right now, it's it, as one piece, it's very harsh, but if we split it, um, the transition is much smoother and it sort of eases into the transition. So now we can just sort of drag this to a level um, at which we're happy. Click OK and that will start to bring in some of this base layer into our top layer. Now, in the case of this particular image, I think uh, the previous technique that we used looked a little bit better. Um, right now, I think um, there's just too much uh, difference between you know blacks and uh, and highlights. Again, we could further refine this by by going into the black side of things, hitting down Option and and kind of adjusting this to let um, you know some of the the blacks go a little bit more washed out, um, but again I don't think that the uh, the final effect is as nice as it was when we use the masks. But again it's another option for you and uh, it's a really easy one to start with. So just thought I'd show you that. So essentially what we're going to do now is I'm just going to uh, get rid of our blend if mode over here and we're going to look at a third method. So with the third method essentially let's just create a brand new layer mask and um, let's imagine that we want to uh, just 
you know maybe split this particular image into two where um, we like the fact that um, that the bottom here is in shadows and we want maybe the canopy up here to be a little bit brighter so essentially what we can do is we can create um, a gradient right on our layer mask and just drag that down and um, essentially what we're getting is we're getting the the highlights from the bottom layer coming through the top and then um, everything that was minus one EV essentially at the bottom uh, stays here and what we can further do, let's say we want to make this look um, a little bit more mysterious, we can just take our brush and essentially just uh, manually brush that out. So we can lower our flow down and we can just kind of brush some of this in here and that again kind of adds back some of that mystery um, that we had in the, the original image uh, at minus one EV. Now, um, that's oftentimes what I'll end up doing is I'll just uh, manually blend it using a layer mask and a paintbrush. Uh, if that's you know what it comes down to, then that's just what you do. But let's say that we want to further refine this now where um, we essentially let some more highlights through in different areas. So what we can do now is just take, uh, with our layer mask selected, we're gonna go into image, apply image, and uh, make sure that invert is selected because if we don't invert it essentially what we're doing is we're letting through everything that is um, essentially everything that is a shadow will um, will be masked out which we don't want we want everything that's a highlight to be masked out of our top layer so by holding uh, invert essentially our highlights from our base layer will come back through again click OK and now we see that we've got something uh, that looks pretty interesting and if we toggle our layer mask on and off um, this is essentially what we're getting now we can further refine this again just using um, our levels adjustment so command L or control L and we can just kind of adjust um, how much of this is going to uh, be affected um, just by sliding our, our levels adjustment so that's essentially the third way of doing it and this way is you know it's a nice controlled way and, and basically um, you could still do the the actual brush with the first approach that we looked at and in fact you can do it with the second approach too by just adding a layer mask on top of it um, but um, I, you know it, whether you like this layer or this approach or the the first approach that we showed it really doesn't matter it's whatever is most uh, comfortable for you and whatever gives you the best effect so those are the three ways that I typically uh, tend to do my blending and of course if you're into uh, three exposure exposures, four exposures, the process is the same. Essentially what I tend to do is um, once I found something that I'm happy with, um, then I'll, I'll create a stamp visible layer and then I'll start blending my next uh, set of layers on top of that with the same process that we looked at here today. So I hope you found that useful and uh, start applying it to your own images. We'll see you next time.